Hello everybody, my name is Ash and welcome back to the Outer Worlds. We're going to go to Monarch, continue on with the main quest. We've got two things, we've got the, uh, this is what we go with if we don't have the nav key, but we have a nav key because we uh, did a few favours here and there uh, for the board. Uh, and now we're going to go to Stella Bay landing pad. Captain? An unusual wavelength is coming through Monarch's ether wave frequency. The eternal is in us all. The OSI would have you believe that your place in society, indeed in the universe, is preordained. A man who works in the mines of Hephaestus, coating his lungs in mercury dust for naught but a few bits a night, this fate is set in stone? When he dies young, coughing up black blood, his part in the grand plan? No, I say. Greatness is in everyone. Not just those so fortunate as to have been born into prosperity. That was unexpected and odd. Sounds like a bunch of nonsense. I'm inclined to agree with your assessment, by which I mean I have been systemically programmed to do so. I've also received a message from Dr. Wells regarding our having acquired a nav key to Monarch. Considering our contractual alliance with Adjutant Akande, are you sure you want to speak with the outlaw scientist? Doesn't this guy have a life? I don't believe so, Captain. Transmission incoming. Well done. You'll love Monarch. Exotic climate, violent native species, fascinating culture, really. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blight. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. You sound like you've been to Monarch. <laughs> no, never. Monarch is a hotbed of political activity. I can't imagine why Hiram set up shop there. Cuisine, perhaps? What's a hotbed of political activity? Sounds like fun. I certainly wouldn't call it boring, especially if your idea of fun involves navigating a hostile biosphere populated by carnivorous monsters. You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka. Frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. All right, I'm off. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. Okay, good shit, good shit. Uh... Oh, bloody hell. I'm just, just scratching my foot. That's why uh, I'm walking backwards like that. Uh, let's head on out. Now, Nyoka is a potential companion. And fuck her. No. No thanks. She's a pisshead. We need to be professional. We don't want no alcoholics jeopardising our mission. Hey, hold on there. I gotta sign you in. Don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? Well, that is my ship on the landing pad right next to you. I knew it. See, I made what you call a logical deduction. You must have seen those UDL gunships on your way in. There's always three of them these days. Still, they tend to scare folk off. What are they doing out there? You may not have heard, you being new, but Stellar Bay hardly ever gets off-world traffic. Us being cut off by the board and all. Which means I never get to do this part, but I've been practicing. So, here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay. Home of the freshest Sal Tuna and House Beyond. Please state your name for the records. I'm... Dirty Dutch. Well... There's one for the logs. 
I'm even going to give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. Is still a bit that isolated? We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the scars for them, or we would have run out of Reaper's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. So you're not what I expected to find on Monarch. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about rapidons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls. Mostly. Are you saying the board's been lying about this place? Oh, sure. It makes Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going, and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda goes over my head, though. I'm gonna have a look around. Mr. Sanjar will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? Uh, that depends. What is it? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Coswell poster coming in on the next sublight ship, signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. Do you think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? Who's the Black Hole? That's Bertie Holcomb. Only one of the greatest Coswell hackers ever. Everyone's heard of him, even on Monarch. We still get some of the game. You've been living in a sulfur pit or something? Whatever, I don't really care. Ah, uh, you must be a Hammers fan for sure. This poster sounds pretty valuable. I couldn't really say, I'm just a fan of the game. But the fancy collector types say the more people see these things, the less valuable they are. And I figure my poster's been passed around by more than a few people by now. Sure, I can ask about your poster. Thanks a bunch. Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. Alright, so MSI is the company that, that runs this particular town. I think we should probably prom like work alongside them. Okay, now Nyoka is what you know, why did it automatically select the the shit quest that I'd have no desire to do? Right. Talk to Mr. Sanjay. Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new Pacific Space advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? He's often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. No, you have a meeting with me. Did you hear that power play, Celia? They don't make them like this anymore in Halcyon. I only hope you don't judge me by my handshake. Now. What business brings you here? The adjutant sent me. The adjutant herself? Why, I knew the board would see reason eventually, but this... This! Sir, you've prepared for this. Right. Now, see here. You may tell your corporate masters that we will deign to rejoin them on the board, but only once certain conditions are met. I'm just looking for devil. You've you got stones for a guy in the most ignored settlement in H Halcyon. Why, we've got the numbers on our side. What more could we need? Though I take it from your appealingly gruff demeanor and blunt charm that you're not actually here to welcome us back to the board. Or purchase Saltuna. If I have to eat one more weird science project passed off as food in this sprat fucked colony, I'm going to stab someone. Yes, that's it. 
channel your anger. I only wish I could do the same. <laughs> now, I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Sounds like a personal problem. I've got other concerns. What can I do for you? Earlier you mentioned that you were having trouble with other corporations. With the whole board, as a matter of fact. Thanks to the so-called hazard clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. now we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. Sounds like you're freer than anyone else in Halcyon. What? Oh wait, no. <clears throat> and you're tired of scrounging and scraping by, is that it? Yes, freedom is a tempting ideal, but a rather costly paramour. So what do you mean to do about it? Well, Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. I should point out that I happen to work with the adjutant. Well, you don't have to rub it in. I think he means to warn you about working against the board. What a notion. We want to rejoin the board to our betterment and theirs. And my plan involves a two-pronged approach. The first part of which is seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. Fine, but how do you mean to do that? With a Bolt 52 cartridge, of course. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. This Bolt 52 sounds useful. What is it? Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. Where do I find one? In the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. These days it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. And I'll get, go get your Bolt 52. Be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Before I go, I need to ask you something. What can I do for you? How do I get to Devil's Peak? You'd head south along the road and look for a mountain to the west. Not that I'd advise it. It's a terribly dangerous trek. But, if you insist on going, I'd recommend taking a local guide. Nioka would be a prime candidate. If you can keep her sober. I'm looking for an information broker. Hiram? Why, he's probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. How do I get to Devil's Peak? You'd head south along the road and look for a mountain. But, if... I have questions about MSI and the good old days. Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. How did MSI get kicked off the board in the first place? I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Do you mean that you initiate your own removal from the board? Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. But back then, it was known as Terra 1. Terra 1 and Terra 2. But the board just put their best possible... best people on that one. Wait, what? Wait. What happened to, to the other corporations? As you may have noticed, this planet has more than its share of hazards. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. 
but not MSI, right? Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to, but there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. How forward thinking of you. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. Using the board... Huh. I take it your leadership didn't embrace your ideas. No, they laughed in our faces and insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. Guess you missed the transport. Many of us chose to stay behind. And as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. I moved forward with our planned reforms as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. You should have known you couldn't oppose them. But we weren't trying to. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. What's the hazard clause? It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. For the greater good. Allegedly. And they... you sound skeptical. Monarch may be dangerous, but it's hardly the wasteland the board describes it to be. Whatever the board's goals, the greater good has little part in them. Why exactly do you want back on the board? Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community, and being cut off means slow strangulation. They treat you pretty roughly. Is it worth going back to that? I'm not a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. Leverage? Don't get ahead of yourself, sir. Yes, yes. It'll be easier to explain once we have the Bolt 52. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here. And who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. I want to talk about something else. What can I do for you? I met Grim, the landing pad guard. I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? I did a bang-up job. Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? Got to go. All right, and that's for you. Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest salt tuna in Halcyon. What can I do for you today? Grim asked me to check with you about his toss ball poster. You know... Sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Oh yeah, I overheard you said you were having money troubles? Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well, I just spent most of my paycheck on Rhapsodon acid. Do you normally blow your money on Rhapsodon parts? Laws, no. Sometimes it's canid teeth, or mantis worm wings, 
Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. Why are you buying so much from Sebastian? So I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. Sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. Just ask him on a date. I couldn't. What if he said no? Hey, maybe you could ask him for me. I, I mean, a no would still be bad, but it won't be quite as embarrassing if you ask. Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. Wait, I'm curious. What do you see in Sebastian? He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. That's all I need to know. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. Talk to you later. Hey, and that little dialogue was enough to get us to level up. So, what I want to do now... Uh, science, medic, there. Yeah. Bump that up to 70. Yeah, fuck it, we'll bump it all the way up to 60. Seems good to me. So yeah, I actually do want to level up uh, MSI just so I can uh... Wrap mask and painted eyes right here. Just so I can uh, get the little armor because it's pretty good. Hello stranger, can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts? Let's talk about Celia. Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days, but I've been meaning to ask her how that rafted on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Would you consider going on a date with her? Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Don't get me wrong, I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady, always talks nice and slow so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit. On account of no one else having any use for rapted on tongues. Don't take my word for it. Spend some time with her. I promise she won't ask for a discount. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Okay. I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. All right. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? He said he'll go on a date with you. Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Look. All I know is if you act this crazy, you'll send him running. Right. I've just got to be myself. Just my normal self. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do, and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back-to-work look. Anyhow, thank you. Okay, there we go. That's a nice little quick quest that we can do there. I think I'm going to be sick. Pull yourself together and tell me what happened. I clean the apartments while everyone's at work. I've seen all sorts of messes, but this... If you're going into the apartments, do not go into the lower one on the right. That's where the body is. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go contemplate a hot shower. Hmm. There's a murder. Murder! Stainless steel rats. Such a pile of clues. Medic. 
Magnum. Quite a bit of blood here. Examine. Toss ball betting slip. All this slip. The betting slip lists an increase in bold wages made for a team called Mostly Colonists. It's from left field toss ball betting. Several ragged outfits, all of the same cut and colour, were stuffed into the suitcase. the warehouse is I think we already passed the warehouse didn't we so this is actually this is the warehouse look you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready all right she's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry Karen said she'd shove you in a box if you keep running them out Mouth like that. Did she now? Well, I can see I was mistaken. Because if Catherine really had sent you, there'd be a lot more expletives in your message. I hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my auto loader foreman stages a walkout, and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. Your chief what? Braxton. He's in charge of getting the fish fat, but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals, but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess. He'll come back eventually. You can't constrain a person's freedom. I can't keep working double shifts either. Since you don't seem to be constrained yourself, maybe you could check up on him. He lives in the apartments. Tell him Velma said to get his lazy ass down here, or she might start noticing those extra drugs he's been taking from supply. Something else on your mind? I mean about Grim's poster. This again? I swear, this is the last time I contract for any special requests. You can tell Grim his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. So now it's going to Nell. That about cover it? Who's Nell? She runs the betting parlor across the way. Nice professional lady. She asked me about the poster once. Just once. Made a real generous offer, too. So it's about money. Damn right it is. You still have a poster, right? It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. You're just giving Grimm's poster away. Didn't he pay for it? No. I paid Sublight for it. So it's mine. And when Nell pays me for it, it'll be hers. Grim may have asked for the poster, but it's not his until I take his money. Surely we can work something out. Sure can. If you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. You won't do much business if your neighbors hate you. Consider this an investment. I got a feeling you and Catherine would get on like tumors on a pig. Take the poster then. And if I never hear another word about it, it'll be too soon. Okay, what's this about your foreman? Caleb Herrick. Runs the autoloader operators. He thinks I don't pay them enough for flipping switches and turning dials. He and his whole crew walked out. Say they won't come back unless I pay them more. I can talk to Caleb for you. You mind slapping him around a little while you're at it? I'm joking. Mostly. Unless you can do it without hurting his job performance. If you can find a way to get him back to work... I'll make it worth your while. Check the yacht club. He's usually there. All right. Said Braxton had been stealing drugs. Stealing such a nasty word. Let's call it skimming. And yeah, let's just say I've noticed the sterile biotics he used for the fish would get used a little faster on Braxton's shifts. 
Why didn't you turn him in? We're not like those corporate towns where you get fined for sleeping on the wrong side of the bed. Besides, the Spacer's Choice stuff we use is cheap enough. And Braxton knows how to get the salt tuna. Fat and mostly tumor free. Ah, oh dear. Who's this Catherine you mentioned when I first came here? Sublight boss out of Fallbrook. Handles most goods that come in or out of Cellar Bay. Has a mouth like a ground six spacer. Let's talk about Caleb. Unless you're here to tell me he's agreed to do his job again, I've got nothing to say. Why, why can't you give him a pay increase? I don't have the bits for it, plain and simple. Besides, if I make an exception for him, I gotta do the same for everyone. All right, the hard workers aren't they? Don't they deserve a some compensation? Hard workers? They turn dials and flip switches. The machines do all the actual work. Caleb and his crew have it better than anyone else around here. I'll tell you that much. If Caleb wants to keep this job, he'd better get back to it. I'm about ready to hire sublight contractors at this rate. Wow, a hundred. A hundred persuade, wow. Alright, let's talk about something else. And um, talk to you later. Alright, let's keep going on with this. Yacht club. So yeah, he's usually in the yacht club. Uh, upstairs, if I remember correctly. New face, huh? You from off world? Yep, dirty Dutch of the unreliable. A ship captain. Well, I'll be here. Let me buy you a drink. Consider it an NSI welcome. Why don't you grab a chair? Sit a spell and revel with us. We need to talk about Velma. Sure thing. What did you want to discuss? How long can you miss work? Not forever. But we've each saved up our bits, and I stashed them safe in my home by the diner. I reckon we could last a week or two at least. That was threatening to replace you with sublight contractors. Nope. I'm calling her bluff. If she wants to threaten us, we'll see how she likes it when Sanjar finds out she gave sublight even more dominion in Stellar Bay. Sanjar's going to fire Velma if you don't return to work. I never meant to call for anyone's head on a pike. Velma's not my favorite person, but she ain't been cruel to us. Devil it all. Now you got me feeling sorry for her. Fine. I guess we'll go back to work to save Velma's job. We'll find a better time to negotiate our wages. Tell Velma not to worry. We'll look out for her. All right. Into the warehouse. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. Let's talk about Caleb. You knocked any sense into him yet? I told him you were about to lose your job. He said he'd come back. Well, that's awful nice of him. Sure wouldn't have expected that. Thanks for your help. You've got me out of a tight spot here. Take this for your efforts. Honest work deserves honest pay. Something else on your mind? Honest work. I lied to complete the quest. Oh well, whatever. We got we got the boost of XP. So yeah, we've got quite a lot of qu quick quests you can do without even leaving this place. Uh, this is the okay. That's arm sto arm storage. What the hell? Oh, that's the bolt. That's the bolt. Oh, okay. Hello, dearie. 
Well, I don't believe I've seen you before. And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. What can Auntie Abigail do for you? Are you in charge of handing out medicine? Yes, indeed. Someone's got to keep Stella Bay's people healthy and energized. I guess so. You certainly seem like you could use a peppy walk, dearie. Uh, nothing now, thanks. All right, she's something to do with New Yorker. I thought there was a quest I could get from her. Who will? Oh, will, oh, will, will, will. Let's just uh, keep going. Got really, a really itchy foot for some reason. It's pretty. It's kind of annoying me. Okay, so we can go over there. Let's uh, go over these two resident. Okay. So where's the toss ball? Where's that toss ball place? That's what I want to go to next. Is this it over here? Nope. How's this building? I don't remember this one. There we are. Ooh, you're the new face. Wow, you must be up on all the latest tossball games. So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial H Mannix. I play for Auntie Cleo's Darlings. Don't you recognize me? I'd heard they'd gotten a new hacker. Is that why everyone's making such a fuss about you? But what are you doing on Monarch? Ah, uh, part of a goodwill tour on Hel of Halcyon. We're meeting fans across the colony. <laughs> Maybe we're not so isolated as I thought. So, what can I do for you? I found this betting slip in a dead man's apartment. Any idea what might have happened to him? Poor Isaac. I was wondering why I hadn't seen him in a few days. I'd really like to help. Isaac was a sweet fellow, even if he did have terrible teeth. Uh, I'm listening. Right. So the thing with Isaac is he didn't know where to stop. He'd get stuck on something, and he just couldn't let it go. Sometimes he'd drink Purpleberry Punch by the leader. Other times he'd keep betting on a losing team. Started owing the wrong people money. So, who did he owe? I don't know for sure, but I saw Elijah and his buddies pushing Isaac around. They're hooligans from Fallbrook. They sweep into town, drop supplies off behind the warehouse, and spend the rest of their stay getting rowdy over tossball games. They usually loiter in the alley behind the yacht club. They're not allowed in the bar anymore. I bet you anything Isaac ran into trouble with one of them. Thanks for the tip. Mr. Sanjar will be pleased to hear about it when you're done. I know he gets fed up with the Fallbrook bullies, but there's not much he can do. All right, let's see what we can do about these guys. And the old alleyway. Sir, please, I need your help. I fucking can't. Yeah, I'll talk to you in a second once I've done my this quest. Who the fuck are you? This ain't your alley. Beat it. Huh? Beat it. Hey, what are you doing here? This is our secret alley. Verda already pissed by those crates to market. I know you murdered Isaac. Listen, that purple tooth twerp had it coming. Not that anyone has proof. And not that it's any of your business. I'm making it my business. Oh yeah? What are you saying exactly? You've bullied long enough. If you know what's good for you, you'll clear out and never come back. Wow. Most of the pencil pushers around here cave as soon as you look at them funny. Fine. We're going. This ain't worth it. 
All right, and peace, peacefully told them to fuck off. So with that, we'll finish up the quest by talking to Nandi. Uh, Nandi? Yeah, Sanjar Nandi. Uh, fine day for business, isn't it? Anyway, what can I do for you? I suppose I could. Isaac Rose is dead. I found the people who killed him. But that's terrible. What happened? It was Elijah and his hooligan friends. I ran them out of town. I'm glad to hear you've dealt with them. They've been causing quite a bit of trouble around town. I've been consumed with other matters of late, but I would have dealt with them eventually. Yeah, if you say so. It really was on my to-do list. Still, your intervention in the matter is much appreciated. Please consider this payment for your services. All right, and finally, uh, let's talk. Let's talk to this woman, Agnes. Thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy isn't at risk of being eaten by some vile creature. Please, you have to help me get my little Sasha back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a Rapidon is melting him with acid as we speak. Calm down. Take a deep breath and tell me what happened. Don't you tell me to calm down. I promised my boy I'd protect him for always. But how can I keep him safe if he's run away? He ran out into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the Rapidons, Mantisaurs, and Marauders with toxic sulfur pools and poisonous glands, but he didn't listen. Please, won't you go and find my boy? <sighs> Why would Tucker over and away? He's been pining for an adventure, says he's tired of living cooped up behind the walls. But he doesn't understand how dangerous it is out there. I warned him, a raptodon would snap him up for a chance of God. I just know one ripped his arm off and is gnawing on his sweet little fingers. He should have listened to his mama. I promised I'd keep him safe here with me. Where could where would he have gone? He's been listening to those awful broadcasts that the iconoclasts put out. I begged Sanjar to put a stop to them, but did he? No. And now I just know my boys run off to Amber Heights. That is, if a Manta Queen hasn't spooled out and eaten his entrails for breakfast already. Good lord, where is Amber Heights? That old settlement, southwest of Stellar Bay. I don't know which is worse, the thought of my son shacking up with the nutty iconoclast, or that he never made it. Scraps could be nesting in his rotting body alongside the road as we speak. Or, or maybe marauders got him, pulled all his teeth out, crushed him into their drugs and made him snort him. Oh, the things that could happen to my sweet baby. She's got a flair for the imag for imagination, isn't it? that's what goddamn she are. What are you saying about the iconoclasts? Those low life degenerates leading innocent boys into a life of danger. Oh, they make it sound so exciting. Like it's noble to risk it all out there fighting for the greater good. How noble is it to worry your loved ones? Not at all, I say. But still they preach their sermons of anarchy and rebellion to anyone who'll listen. If they weren't holed up in Amber Heights, I'd knock them all upside the head. All right. Ah, <sighs> did you say there was a reward involved with this request? Well, I, I, I guess I can't ask you to leave the town walls for free. It is deathly dangerous out there. I've got some bits saved up for a rainy day. I'll give you every last one if you just bring my Tucker back to me. I won't even be mad at him running off. You tell him I, I won't be mad. All right, I'll help you. Thank you. Oh, I know he'll be safe now that someone's able to fetch him home. You look for him in Amber Heights, you hear? It's down the road southwest of town. I'm sure he made it that far. I just know it. And if you find any of them iconoclasts indoctrinating my boy, you punch them in the mouth. Tell them what I think of them luring little boys away from their mamas. It's immoral. Right. Okay. With that, 
We've got one more. We've got a quest. But let's uh, meet with Sophia's contact. That's the final thing we need to do. And this is an episode is going quite long. You know, we had a pretty short episode last last night. Uh, last episode was pretty pretty short. This one's going going long. So may I help you with something, my good man? The kind of pine grows by night. At last. I was beginning to think I'd waste away in this wretched place, waiting on orders from our mutual friend. You're here about Devil's Peak Station, yes? That's... You didn't hear that from me? You didn't hear it from me? The soul of discretion. Ms. Akande chooses her people well. Once you leave this forlorn town, look to the horizon and you'll see a mountaintop that looks like a fiendish skull with two curving horns. That's where the station is. Mountain top with horns, got it. There's a path along the western side of the mountain. Unfortunately, monsters and marauders are as common as kindling on Monarch, so the approach will be perilous. Do you have any suggest useful suggestions, or are you just pointing out the obvious? Well, you're a Conde's blunt instrument, aren't you? I'm sure you can manage. However, there is a mercenary of some fame in town, Mioka. She frequents the yacht club. Law, how I hate that name. Anyway, she might be useful if you can overcome her proclivities. Proclivities? She's rather fond of drink, but she's a good shot when her hands are steady. Good luck. Now, you should move along. After all, we are supposed to be strangers. Yeah, look at that. Now, obviously, we've got New Yorker. Oh, I've got two way points, points to her. So, with that, I think we can call it an episode, and we'll level up next, well, actually, we'll level up next time, we've got level 16, which is a perk, and a, uh, skill points, which is A-OK, -okay. so I hope you guys enjoyed, thank you for sticking it out for this past 47 minutes, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.